Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, I will be going first. My name is Jason Overfelt. I'm a professor in the Department of Linguistics, so I'm going to take a chance to tell you about what we do, um, what a major in linguistics might look like. So I'm going to do that first by um, just giving you a little bit in, of information about me. So um, my interests are in syntax and semantics. That means I'm interested in the relationship between form and meaning in natural languages. Um, I also do research on the language Tigrinya, which is an Ethiosemitic language. It's spoken in Eritrea and Ethiopia. Um, I'm also, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm a new professor, so I'm establishing a new lab called the Linguistic Variation Lab in the Department of Linguistics. Uh, with the goal of giving um, undergraduates uh, research opportunities. So to work on uh, their own languages, their own dialects or the languages and dialects of the area or just whatever they're interested in. So when we talk about linguistics, um, what we mean is the scientific study of how humans use, acquire and understand language. So the idea is that what it means to know a language is to have some tacit knowledge of a set of rules and representations that you can manipulate. And this is what linguists are out to understand. How do people use those rules and how do children acquire them importantly? Um, so a major in linguistics can lead you to develop uh, various transferable skills that you can find being essential to many different career paths. So a lot of people who study linguistics may not go on to have a career as a professor or as an actual linguist, but they might, for instance, go into fields like law and medicine and advertising in ways that I'll show you in just one moment. And this is made possible by gaining skills for critical thinking, for logic and argumentation, and then, of course, writing down um, your uh, arguments and your research projects and so on give you uh, important skills for communicating in a written medium. Uh, you gain skills for data and literacy, uh, data literacy and analysis. So linguists inevitably deal with large amounts of language data and comb through them to find patterns. So problem solving is also a big skill in accounting for the patterns that you see. And uh, a lot of linguistics uses technology to, to actually study language or to at least do data management. And then, of course, linguistics isn't done in a vacuum, so uh, you'll inevitably end up working with other linguists, other students in the program on various projects. Joining labs like mine will help you develop leadership and teamwork skills. And then, of course, as we study uh, as many of the world's 6,000 languages as we can, of course, you will inevitably come to appreciate uh, the diversity of the human experience along the way. So the kinds of things that linguists end up doing is of course being uh, college professors or maybe working for a program, you know, like the Summer uh, Institute of Linguistics whose uh, goal is the documentation and preservation of natural languages. Uh, many linguists go on to become speech language pathologists. Uh, they will end up doing teaching English as a second language, something that we can help you with here. There are linguists who end up getting a minor in computer science or double majoring in computer science. Um, that's something that you can do at Oakland. And they go on to be computational linguists, um, making the big bucks at Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, and so on. Uh, linguists are famous at absolutely crushing the LSAT and then go on and have careers as lawyers or doing consulting for law firms or even marketing. So the whole idea is um, like, why would you call a deodorant, um, you know, uh, what, power thunder? It's like, well, obviously because it rings true somehow with a certain demographic and linguists are very good at uh, doing these kinds of experiments. Uh, language testing, so working for Duolingo, I know a number of linguists who have taken that track. And then of course the entertainment industry as well. Somebody's got to make sure that video games are spoken in the language of the country that they're being played in, so linguists can help with that as well. Uh, we also offer, as of this fall, a minor in speech language pathology. So if one of the visions that you have for yourself is to go on and do speech path, maybe you want to uh, study somewhere else, uh, we offer now a program that, for instance, Wayne State, Eastern Michigan um, accepts uh, to, to sort of launch your career um, yeah, along that path. Do you want to be a technical writer? an editor, a writer, or a web developer. And check out the professional and digital writing major offered by the Department of Writing and Rhetoric. Some of our graduates have gone on to work 
for companies like Volkswagen, Newman Beaumont, and Target. Some have pursued law degrees and graduate schools. Our program has received a prestigious writing program certificate of excellence. This honor recognizes innovative college writing programs that achieve excellence in instruction, career development, community engagement, and cultural inclusivity. You will get to take a variety of writing classes which will prepare you for careers in technical writing, business communication, social media, digital storytelling, and other forms of professional and digital writing. You will hone your ability in the classroom, the media lab, and the community while getting a hands-on writing degree that includes significant real-world experience. You will also work with nationally recognized faculty in small classes. We designed this major to meet the growing need for strong, versatile professional writers. Whatever your degree is, our writing minor will make you a standout job candidate. We would love for you to join us. Find us at oakland.edu slash WRT. A couple of things about the Department of Psychology at OU is like a lot of um, different universities, we do have major core classes. So we have our introductory psychology, we have research design, and we have statistics, which are the foundation for all of our classes. They're important to take. Um, and a lot of people don't realize actually that math and stats and writing and everything are, and re research are the foundation of psychology. There's a lot of math. Um, and then we have uh, a, a variety of classes students can choose from. So we, we want students to have um, completed courses in a number of different domains. So we have a developmental psychology domain, evolutionary and comparative psychology domain, and we now have an evolutionary center that was just opened, which is really cool if that's something you're interested in. We have behavioral health, which is where a lot of our students go who are interested in you know, doing stuff in um, health services. We have cognition, perception, biological psych, and social personality psych. But like I said, math and writing are really important um, in, the pro in the Department of Psychology for all psychology departments, but we do really have strong um, stats and writing classes, uh, writing intensive classes. So um, I love, I've been teaching for 23 years at Oakland and I love, I have intro students. I just started that and I have um, advanced students. I have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 level classes. Um, and so I see students across the board and I'm also the chief advisor for the department. So I get to talk to students and the growth that I see in terms of um, understanding research, writing, et cetera, is so impressive to me. It makes me feel so happy at the end when I get my students in my capstone classes who are just writing these beautiful um, papers in a, uh, American Psychological Association or APA style, it's fantastic. The nice thing about Oakland University is we have a lot, most of our classes are taught by faculty rather than graduate student assistants. So you get um, a lot of uh, exposure to the faculty members. In fact, a lot of students will do research with um, students. And a lot, then they will share publication, they'll um, do presentations, they'll go to uh, conferences with their students. And it's really great. There's probably seven or eight active labs that are currently being done. People are working in, with the zoo, um, doing behavioral research with the zoo. There's uh, research with mice and mazes like you typically think of, but there's also research um, looking at, you know, sleep and diet and um, use of drugs on students' academic and work life. That's all across the board. We also have a National Honor Society, as most universities do, but ours is really super active. We have a lot of programs and events that they provide. It's a great um, program. You don't have to join it, but I would highly recommend it or get involved by becoming a board member. And then we have this uh, well-developed internship program, too, and I have created and coordinate the program. And we get students who work in law firms. They work in, you know, children's village. They work in children's village, police stations, fire stations. They work uh, court county courthouses. They work with gender and sexual uh, centers for gender and sexuality and neuropsych centers. I have about 50 students each 
semester. Um, and a lot of the placements have led to job offers. Um, one of the things I hear from career services is that a lot of the employers really love psych students because we are well-rounded. You get some of the skills you learn, critical thinking, communications, writing and oral, leadership, et cetera. But anyway, students have found employment with Chrysler, Henry Ford, Havenwood Hospital, Gateway Pediatrics, a whole bunch of different um, organizations with a bachelor's, which is one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that you don't need a master's or PhD. You can get jobs with uh, a bachelor's degree as well. Graduate school is not always an option and our students have been accepted at uh, U of M, Michigan State, Wayne State, USC. Um, and then we also have a class called Success in the Psychology Major, which is fantastic. Um, it is for students who are transfer students or new students who want to get acclimated to the program, but it talks about careers. It's kind of like a program that helps students like try, try to figure out how to be successful in classes, how to you know, navigate their, essentially their major and then what to do afterwards. And then if they're interested in graduate school, how to get into graduate school. And if you want more information, um, I, like I said, I'm the uh, chief academic advisor. I'm the internship coordinator. We call it student success coordinator and emphasize my job is essentially to help you succeed. And then Dr. Keith Williams is the director of undergraduate programs.